everyone's been enjoying the show so far. This isn't what I normally look like. I'm here as Grimes, reading the Communist Manifesto. And thank you so much. Let me see, how do we do this? Oh, okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about creepypasta. This is my presentation, Not Your Mom's Spaghetti, a short but comprehensive history of this internet phenomenon. So let's get into it. What is creepypasta? Well, before we get into it, <laughs> let's preface it with a quick trigger warning. I wrote gross because creepypasta is disgusting, but you should also know, just in general, we're gonna be talking about mm, like vague mentions of violence, uh, suicide, and a stabbing. So on that note, let's jump right in. What, what is this? So, <laughs> creepypasta is a catch-all term that generally refers to all types of horror fiction that gets posted online. Um, so, I've come up with a handy little flow chart to explain to you how this process usually happens. Step one, you start out with some good old-fashioned creative writing, usually in the horror and sci-fi genre. Step two, you find a horror forum online with aficionados such as yourself. And step three, if your, if your creepypasta goes viral, you too could someday be a meme. So some places that you might find this on the web are Reddit on the No Sleep Forum, uh, the Creepypasta Wiki, classic favorite, and the SCP Foundation, which is a website where you pretend that you've caught uh, fictitious, terrifying animals. So, <laughs> if you know anything about creepypasta, you probably know one of these little characters. Um, a lot of creepypastas will be iterations of each other uh, because someone will come up with some sort of easily drawn and easily replicable figure and other people will pick up on it and it'll become a trend or a meme. Some of these well-known characters include Jeff the Killer. Round of applause for Jeff the Killer. Woo! <laughs> He's so great. Um, another one is Suicide Squidward. Woo! Um, notably, Suicide Squidward made his TV debut about two years ago when Nickelodeon, for God knows what reason, decided to put him in an actual SpongeBob cartoon. I reached out to them for comment and they never responded. Um, and then finally, we have the most famous creepypasta figure of them all, the Slender Man. We'll get back to him. So, what does pasta have to do with it? <laughs> Nothing. So, the term creepypasta is derived from the term copypasta. I hope you're with me now. We can turn to our favorite website and forum, Urban Dictionary, for the definition of this. Uh, copypasta is an amount of lengthy text that has been repeatedly copied from somewhere and pasted as a reply to an irrelevant subject. Copy, paste, copy, pasta, you get it. You get where we're coming from. So one that you may be familiar with. I won't read the whole thing, but just so that you get the general gist. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on al Qaeda, and I have over 300 confirmed kills. I am trained in guerrilla warfare, and I'm the top sniper in the entire US Armed Forces. You are nothing to me, but just another target. Anyways, so, <laughs> uh, when was creepypasta popular? Because as you could probably guess by the dated vibe of the previous images, it's not popular anymore. I've created this gravestone for its legacy. Here lies creepypasta, born roughly around 2005 on 4chan, one of our favorite places, also where the term copypasta originated from. And it's really tough to pinpoint exactly when creepypasta died, but personally, I believe the nail in the coffin to be this horrible 2018 movie starring Joey King called Slender Man. If you haven't had the pleasure of watching it, I wish I was you. <laughs> so back at the very beginning of the internet, there was a phenomenon that was quite popular that still even persists to this day in some forms called the scary chain email. 
And so I found this example of one. I think this is pretty indicative of what this genre usually consists of. My name is Summer. I am 15 years old. I have blonde hair and blue eyes, no nose or ears. My body is covered with scars. Didn't I tell you? I'm dead. My dad killed me with a kitchen knife in the year 2001. Write that down. If you do not post this on 10 other pages or groups in the next 15 minutes, I will appear by your bed and I will murder you. When I was like 10, I thought this stuff was really serious and I used to share these all the time, which I think really comes back to the message of what creepypasta is, which is like terrifying children for fun. So, <laughs> if you've heard of creepypasta, you've probably heard of the Slender Man stabbing. This catapulted creepypasta into the mainstream consciousness and along with it brought a moral panic around what kids were doing online in their spare time. So, what is Slender Man? The Slender Man, uh, as you can see and as you've probably already seen, is quite literally a Slender Man. He is pretty tall, he wears a suit, sometimes he has tentacles coming out of his back. Um, he's really, really easy to draw and recreate if that's your thing, part of why he spread so quickly. Uh, he was created in 2009 on the Something Awful Horror Forums as part of a Photoshop horror contest. So this is the sort of iconic, I don't know how to say this word, ubiquitous image. And there was also a really popular 2012 game. I say really popular. It was really popular to me. Like, I played it a lot. Um, it was called Slender. I might still play it. That's classified information. Uh, so back to the 2014 Slender Man stabbing. In Wisconsin, two 12-year-old girls, Morgan and Anissa, stabbed their friend Peyton in the woods 19 times. Don't worry. She survived. God bless her. Um, these two lovely young ladies were found not guilty due to uh, mental health issues. Both of them ended up going to uh, mental health facilities. The one on the right just got out. Fun note. <laughs> uh, so they took it upon themselves, basically. I mean, they were 12. They thought that if they sacrificed their friend ritualistically, they would become proxies of the Slender Man. So they like literally wrote up this little list of supplies they needed to become proxies of the Slender Man. Um, but as I alluded to earlier, the moral panic that sort of erupted from this wasn't ultimately that characteristic of what creepypasta is all about. It's not actually like telling your kids to like go into the woods and like stab their friend 19 times with a kitchen knife. Uh, so what is creepypasta about if it's not that? To go over a little bit of what happens in these stories, I've compiled some of the tropes that are commonly found in creepypasta, one of which is a haunted video game. So, <laughs> the scary video game creepypasta subgenre, super, super popular. It all comes back to the idea of like, if you're not that talented at Photoshop or creative writing, what's something that you can easily do? You can easily come back to some well-loved source material like Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's not that hard to just like put some blood dripping down Sonic's face and like turn his eyeballs red and write your little story and there you go. So Mario, Pokemon, Sonic the Hedgehog, Legend of Zelda, these are all uh, pretty common creepypasta source material. Um, I love this, by the way. The fan art, so impressive. Chef's kiss. Um, <laughs> another really popular creepypasta trope is the character in a mainstream franchise. So, for example, Mickey Mouse. There's a really famous creepypasta where someone finds a tape and, like, Mickey Mouse is, like, upside down and the colors are inverted. And if you watch it, you die. And that's pretty much the, the premise, the whole plot. Um, Squidward from Spongebob, really popular, uh, enough about that. So, <laughs> the next genre of creepypasta, coming all the way back to our fave Slender Man, is the found footage genre. So way back in 2009, when Slender Man first became a thing on those forums, this YouTube project called Marble Hornets emerged from that. And this was kind of awesome, uh, if you were like 14 at the time, which I was. <laughs> and it was basically just like a 
mockumentary YouTube series where these people are camping, they see the Slender Man, there's like 500 episodes, I highly recommend it. Um, for the next one, bestie. Um, <laughs> so the next like category of creepypasta is just like totally unnecessary, gratuitous body horror for the sake of body horror. Many of these fics actually, weirdly enough, have the central premise that the government any government, take your pick, is like secretly funding this super unrealistic human experiment that goes deeply awry. And that's how we get pictures like these, I guess. The final, actually I don't know if this is the last one. The next <laughs> characteristic of creepypasta is a lot of times with these stories you will see very clear, almost like maybe a little plagiarism when it comes to either the TV show Supernatural or the Harry Potter franchise. Creepypasta came out in 2005, Supernatural came out in 2005, Match Made in Hell, and a lot of times you will literally be reading Creepypasta and the names of the characters will be like Harry, Ron, Sam, and Dean. <laughs> oh my God, how'd you come up with that? <laughs> and then finally, our last category of Creepypasta, the like sort of crack style, maybe a kid wrote this, copy pasta that goes viral. The most iconic one is who was phone, comes from obviously a 4chan comment. So you're with your honey and you're making out when the phone rings. You answer it and the voice is, what are you doing with my daughter? You tell your girl and she says, my dad is dead. So who was phone? <laughs> Great question. Will creepypasta return and be popular again? Get, let's get into some theory. So personally, I believe that even though creepypasta has not had a renaissance in quite some time, the popularity of TikTok, I think it's gonna make a comeback. Just my prediction. I think we've already seen a lot of these sort of like horror genre type style TikToks pop off. And my end goal, like my hope, my dream, is that teenagers start acting like this again. Because <laughs> quite frankly, it freaks me out that teenagers aren't weird anymore. Like when I see all these teenagers on TikTok being like conventionally attractive and like socially acceptable, I'm like, this is too much. This is too much. I wanna see this shit again. What, what is that one even wearing? I don't know. I wanna see it again. Let's bring this back. Uh, and then for context, this was me. I was gonna put some pictures here of me at different anime conventions, but they were so embarrassing that I just like ran out of time. <laughs> um, oh, that's not the ending. <laughs> oh my God, there it is. Thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Get that mic to Cal.